Hello, welcome back to the workbench. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe down below, give us a thumbs up. What I'm taking a look at today is the Ryobi OnePlus P737 18 volt inflator. It works with the Ryobi Lithium OnePlus battery packs. It actually works. I've been using this for a while and it has some problems. So my least favorite feature on this thing is that it overheats remarkably quickly. It's rated for five minutes on, five minutes off, but I don't think it actually gets that far and it heats up quite a bit while it's in operation. So I think that if I can add a fan in here somewhere, I, I'll have to see if there's any room in this case design, or maybe I'll just bolt it onto the side. We'll see if this can actually handle that and it should make it cool down a little faster. So the first thing I'll have to do is get all these screws out and let's see what's inside the case. Since this was in the $20 or less range, I'm not expecting to find too much in here to work with. Also, it is already losing pieces of plastic. It fell out through one of the vents while I was going to get the screws out. Let's see. Here we go. That, wow, that's, that's, well, it's got a piston to move the air. Little motor with uh, lots of metallic dust all over it. Looks like it's been steadily disintegrating over time. That's that's a lot of metal. I'm not sure where that's coming from, but I'm going to have to find out. Also, not too much else interesting in here aside from all the metal shavings. It does look like I might have room to throw a fan in here. Directly above the battery mounts and right below the motor. Oh, ha! Actually, so, the bits that were broken? I was wondering what happened to him. Apparently the fan just ate itself. I don't know why that would be. So I'm gonna have to get on the 3D printer and probably get some ABS out, see if I can crack this off and I'll make it, well, I'll have to design a fan blade to go on here. So that can be replaced. That'll obviously take me a little longer than a minute or two. Let's see what else we can find in here, aside from losing all the screws immediately. That's, Wow, that's some... That's a mixture of grease and metal shavings. I'm curious where the metal shavings are coming from. That's, that doesn't look like it's just... Let's see, that doesn't look like it's just coming in from the outside. Well, that does look like molybdenum grease. Molybdenum grease. And... I'm not sure where the metal's coming from. The piston actually looks okay, but I'll probably have to dig a little more into here to see if that's the case. This looks like it'll come off okay. Um, although this... Oh, wait, that just comes out. So we can just leave this dangling and take this out. Let's see, this is just a quick plate to hold in the cables. Yeah, so we can get this out, and there we go. All right, detaches from there. And now we just have the negative going over to the battery terminal, which I should be able to pull out. And there, detached from the switch. The switch is pretty standard. It's a, let's see what manufacturer is on there. Oh, Startwin, so Chinese brand. It's a 120, 250, 16 amp, 36 volt DC. Oh, so 16 amp, 36 volt DC. Oh, and 16 amp, 125, 250 volt AC. Okay. So, that, if the ratings are okay, that's a decent switch. And there's our, wow, our well spattered ABS plastic case. And that's it. A little surprised the case hasn't deformed under the heat. It actually has gotten pretty toasty. So, somewhat surprising. But, it looks okay. I'm assuming they know what they're doing. And that does look grungy. Oh, I see. Okay, there's the check valve and the opening in the end. To keep air from flowing back in and let you push the air out that way. 
And that's how it works. This piston goes back and forth. It, on one stroke, it pushes in. It pushes the air through that ball bearing there, opens, opens the valve up essentially, pushes the air through this way, and then when it's return stroke, it pulls back. The ball bearing closes. I assume that's a ball bearing or flap of some kind, but looks like a bearing. And then it closes, pulls back. It pulls in air when it, on the return stroke from the rest of it with this uh, valve here. And then on the return stroke going back the other way, it pushes it through again, repeats quite a few times. And this is probably the biggest problem with it. The fan blew itself apart and stopped cooling off the motor and the motor starts overheating and the whole thing stops working efficiently because it generated way too much heat. Not sure where all that metal dust came from. Not sure why the fan shattered into a million pieces. Could have just been cheaply made to begin with. Because I don't think it got impacted by anything. I'd be very surprised. I don't recall anything ever getting through the grates on it. They're not that bad. They're not great. But you'd notice if a screwdriver got stuck through them probably. So I'm going to go clean everything up and I'll get it back together just as soon as everything's cleaned off and re-greased. And now with all the parts cleaned up, I'm going to re-grease them with some caliper grease. It should be able to handle the temperature, but we'll find out. I'll have to actually run it in there and see if that was appropriate at all. Molly down grease might be a little bit of a better option, but I didn't have any handy in my toolkit for some reason. I'm not sure where it went, so I'm going with caliper grease as a substitute. It seems to be about the same viscosity as what was originally in there. So the fan I made for it on the 3D printer, I'll make the model available is this one. I oversized it a bit from the original and had to flip the way the flan blades were running because this is actually the reverse of what I needed looking at the looking at the original fan that was on there. So I'm just going to press fit that on quick with my vise. Done. All set there. That should provide adequate cooling for this thing again. And then reassemble. Let's see what we have next. Let me get the piston head together. There's the gear. This actually got melted out at some point. That's probably what's been taking the brunt of the heat in here. Not sure why, but certainly looks that way. And this went on like so. That's all that makes the seal on here. Essentially, this is the valve and piston ring in one for this little plastic piston. 
all set there. All right, try that again. Make sure it all fits together before I go ahead and put the circlips back on. So far, so good. I'll leave that for, well, actually leave that for next. And this is a squishy ball bearing-ish object ball. I guess. Anyway, valve component. Didn't expect that. I was kind of expecting it to be palm or something, but I'm not sure what plastic that is even. But it doesn't seem to be taking any heat damage in there, so must not be getting hot enough for the plastic to cause it a problem, which is good. And then we'll put the hose going out back on. I think that's correct. And then this goes up to the, yeah, that's got to be right. Now, if there's one thing that I might change out in here, it's this. This is absolutely horrible. The, the thing's about 5 PSI off, as far as I can figure, which is fairly abominable. Fairly abominable problem for a gauge. And that's at uh, relatively 30, 35 PSI. So that's a pretty big percentage off. That's what... 14, 15%, maybe 20 something. Anyway, a huge percentage of error and pretty much unacceptable for use in a gauge. It makes it makes it useless and then I have to get a pen gauge out. So I need an extra tire gauge just to check the actual PSI when I'm filling up the tires with this thing. If you're using one, don't trust it at all. It's not accurate. Garbage, there we go. That all seems to be working. The cable routing is gonna be important on here too because the cables route around this fan, and if that's done incorrectly, uh, they're just gonna catch on it and then get completely torn apart. So I have to make sure that the new fan and the cables, that works okay. We'll see. Oh, and I also have to grease all this up and I found the circlips, so let's get some of that caliper grease on here. Healthy amount. Cleaned out the interior of these as best I could. Not sure what kind of a difference that's going to make. Uh, although, if that was some metal impregnated junk, and, and one of the gears is ripped up. One of the teeth on here was, was a little ripped up, so I don't know if there were some manufacturing flaws on it that just had some voids or something that eventually destroyed themselves. Which is certainly possible. Just make sure there's a healthy amount of grease in everything. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. I'm just not that concerned about this overall, so... If it bites it because it's not the right type of grease, I'm, I'm not going to be that disappointed. It wasn't working too well in the first place, so really, I'm just curious if it'll, if it'll do the trick. That is a difference on these sides. I don't remember which side went down. I'm going to go with the rounded side. Let's see if that's straight. That appears to be. I'm still a bit surprised by the fan tearing itself apart in there. I don't recall having any event that something got chucked into the fan blades, so that's a little weird. I don't know if that was just a manufacturing problem, or it's maybe much easier to get something caught in there than it should be. I think the fact that it happened at all is probably a good indication that the air inlets probably aren't that well designed if they allowed something to just smash straight in and destroy the entire fan. All right, that's good. Get some of this grease off my hands before I go and install this back into the back into the housing. Really, there wasn't much in here. I was kind of surprised by the austerity of the device. It's just an 18 volt straight fan driven directly from the battery. Nothing else in line as far as electronics go, aside from a switch. Just click on, click off, and it causes the pump to go. Simple. I suppose there's a lot less to fill in there, so that's that's probably a good thing. The fan rework I printed out of PETG on a 025 millimeter nozzle Prusa I3 Mark III, and it did a very good job. You can check out the fan itself in a second. Show you exactly what I exactly what I ended up with on there. So the other one that's out came out like this. It's pretty good quality. 
Not a whole lot to complain about on there. I did have to tap out the center of the drill, use the three millimeter, and that press fit perfectly onto the end of this with a nice tight fit so it won't go loose. I'd recommend press fitting it like that. I'll see if I can make a design with a three millimeter, three millimeter integrated, just in case you don't have a way to drill it out and still want to print one of them. I believe this goes around here, like so. Uh, let me see if I can find something that I won't bust up the cable with. Use a spudger. Alright, everything's going on again. And one last check to make sure our polarity is correct. Slots in like that. Negative matches up to here. So that's all good. good time. Done. That one is a little simple even for a tire inflator, although the trigger action feels a little better on it now too. And here's a practical test case. I've got a small child soccer ball to blow up over here. And this is what I was actually initially having problems blowing up before and why I decided to rip this thing down and see what was going on there. That and it was overheating when I was trying to fill up tires on cars rather quickly after about a minute or two. It wasn't putting any air into them and then it was just starting to melt and smoke and rather nasty. So now let's see how it's working. So that's putting out a lot of air. It's actually moving air now. It wasn't when I tested it initially. Also, you can hear it bogging down a bit when it starts to try to actually push the air past my finger when I'm holding it over. Let's see how fast it can inflate this. All right. No, that's not gonna work. That's much better. All right. So, as you can see, that actually worked out okay. Now, I'm not sure how long the ultra disc brake caliper lube is gonna work in there as a grease, but seems to be working fine now, and I uh, probably improved it a little bit over new, although it might cause additional wear, not work, whatever. I'll have to take it apart quick after a while of running it and see if it's still working okay, if it's not getting damaged. Unfortunately, I think that seal on the inside, the one that's acting as the uh, the ring and the and the release valve for the air. Probably your biggest wear component on this thing, and I don't know that that's really that replaceable. I could probably model something, print it in TPU, and replace it, but I'm not sure how long that would last. And that's it. Inside the Ryobi, got it fixed. Works better now. It, rather, it works, period. And it's much improved from where it was uh, when I started this, so happy with the results. Hope you learned something from it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.